Hi, Miles. Hi there. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm excellent. It's good to see you again. Nice to see you. Um, I am in the car, so I'm going to mute myself and stay without my video, but I just wanted to say hi. Well, thank you so much for saying hi. Uh, <laughs> okay. Take, take your time and be safe. Okay. We are going to be waiting for um, Miss Rebecca uh jolly red to get here um before we start but i just wanted to say hello to everybody hello how are you miss gilmore <laughs> i'm fine thank you how are you i am blessed and highly favored can't complain at all all right i understand <laughs> happy valentine's day happy valentine's day i get to spend my my valentine's evening with you all lovely people how about <laughs> I get to share all the love. <laughs> That's right. Couldn't ask for any more. Look, couldn't ask for anything better. Captain Webster, are you sharing only love with us today? Absolutely. Only love today. Multiple hugs to everybody. There we go. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Now, Miles, one thing I will have to do is I will have to break off after I present. Mm -hmm. uh, Captain Whitaker and I both have uh, to break away early. And mm -hmm. if that's okay, I just wanted to let you know that also, sir. Oh, no problem. No problem. Well, um, hopefully Rebecca should be leading this meeting today. But, you know, if you have to uh, tiptoe away, we it'll be O-A-O-K. -okay. I greatly appreciate that, sir. Look, I greatly appreciate you guys because you guys even being here means a lot. We uh, we enjoy the fellowship. Yeah, uh, one of one of the good meetings I get to attend and uh, get to fellowship with some great folks. Oh yeah, well I'm glad we're included in those ranks, those uh, hollowed ranks for sure. <laughs> Miles, I can go ahead and get us started if you want while we're waiting for Rebecca. Is that okay? That is perfectly fine. Go ahead. Okay. Um, 
thank you everyone for attending. Uh, this is Zion Sanger, uh, one of the PAC2 um, part of the leadership team. Today is Valentine's Day, so I just want to wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day. We have um, a few other of our team members who won't be present today. We have Kenny Church, who is our secretary, and Brian Galloway, um, who are attending to other things currently. Um, but I do want to just go ahead and open you all up with a welcome. We have um, no special guests today, so we'll keep with our regular agenda. And I will turn it over to Captain Gaddy, who will give us um, updates on some of the things happening within District 2. Good evening to everyone and happy Valentine's Day. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Fine. Yep, we can hear you can just hear you. fine. Awesome. Okay, we're good. Uh, from my staff, I have uh, Jennifer Hinchy up here. Uh, thanks for being up here, Jen. Um, Lieutenant's off today, and so uh, I, since he was already off in the book, I figured I wouldn't make him come up here and hang out with us. <laughs> so uh, nonetheless, we'll go ahead and get started. There were no homicides reported in District 2 in January. There were six total for 2021. We had 19 robberies in January. Um, in 2021, we had 151 uh, total for the district, an average under 13. Um, you know, we just want to remind everyone, as always, please be, be aware of your surroundings. If something doesn't look right, don't go to your car. Um, you know, get somewhere if you can. Call call the police. Have us respond. Uh, in terms of aggravated assaults, we had 14 incidents in January with 22 victims. Uh, it's a recap. Again, I'm just giving you a recap of so 2021 to give you an idea what we looked like. In 2021, we had 216 incidents with 287 victims. In terms of burglaries, there were 25 in January, uh, 435 total in um, 2021 with an average of 36 per month. In larcenies, we had 141 larcenies in January. 56 of those um, were from the vehicle, which is approximately 40%. 80 of those, 80 of those were, 80 percent of those were from unlocked vehicles. And so just for reminder, you know, and we talk about this all the time, uh, anything that you value, don't leave it out in the open because people are walking through these parking lots, they're walking through your driveways, walking through your yards at night, looking into your vehicles, looking to break into something. And so just be mindful that that you don't leave yourself open yourself to victim. Um, we've talked about this before, <coughs> particularly my Toyota, Toyota Prius owners. Um, there has been an increase in catalytic converter thefts. Um, I explained last month, there are several things you can do to safeguard your vehicles. Always park in a well-lit area, preferably in the view of a doorbell camera, if possible, or some type of home camera system if you have it. Um, the, also, there's a vibrating from uh, cutting the, uh, from the saw cutting off the um, pipe. And so it's enough to activate an alarm uh, if you have one installed. So if you make sure you turn your uh, car alarms on, and also, you can actually have your vehicle, your van, your vehicle identification number engraved into your catalytic converter by a mechanic. Uh, this will uh, help those if we have, happen to recover it. Uh, we may be able to at least, you know, we'll get yours back in the, in the sense that we know we probably won't be able to go back on the car, but be able to find out who, who's done it and be able to connect it to an actual victim. Uh, over the past few months, we've seen a increased number of vehicles stolen um, with the keys in it, left with it running, and that's probably because a lot of you um, are warming up your cars in the morning. Remember, never leave your vehicle unattended. Um, just can't say that enough. In terms of direct patrols, uh, our District 2 officers have uh, conducted a total of 300, I'm sorry, 3,987 direct patrols uh, for the month of January. And so those are just kind of some of the highlights that we've done in District 2 as we continue to work and address the issues that you all may see or have brought to our attention. And so, uh, Jen, do you have anything you want to add from your shop? Um, the only thing that I will add is National Crime Victims Rights Week is coming up in April. This year, the observance is the 24th through the 30th of April. Um, as we plan events, I'll pass that information along to the PAC 
leadership team to push out into the community. Um, and April is also Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Awesome. Thank you, Jen. And so that's pretty much what I have in terms of reports. Um, you know, as always, I'm always happy to see Captain Webster and also uh, Captain Whitaker. You guys are great. And I appreciate you being here and appreciate the work that you're all doing with us. And so uh, I will stand for questions at this time. Uh, Captain Gaddy, just wanted to ask you personally, what do you think is something, some way that the PACs can actually uh, support in potentially lowering some of the, um, the particular standout uh, crimes that you just mentioned? Like, of course, you said about like locking your doors on your cars. Anything else? Anything else stand out that you can say that we can help support you all? Well, and I think, you know, obviously doing what we're doing, I will say this, that I know a number of the different little neighborhoods represent, represented here um, all quite often have list serves or have even meetings and all that kind of stuff. And so, um, you know, please include us. Uh, we have a um, Officer Super, she's our uh, community resource officer. And so I think by including us, by passing this information along with your own individual list serves of things that's going on, um, but also inviting us to participate with you, those are the kind of things that will help us, I'll help you help us. And so, and, and just being like I said, what, what you are right now, it's active. You know, um, I mean, that's the that, and word of mouth and just communicating and passing all this information. That's how big, you all, you all are our biggest um, ally to help combat some of this stuff. Okay, thank you. That's all I have for my report. Thank you, Captain Gaddy. I'm going to turn it over to um, our co-chair of the PAC meeting, Rebecca Red Jolly, and she'll take it from here. Oh, actually, she's, she's just now coming in <laughs> again. I don't know what happened. Are there any other citizen concerns, um, anything going on in any neighborhoods that need to be addressed? Just wanted to ask that one more time before we let Captain Gaddy go. And Angel Romero, I see your hand. Yes, hello. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Angel or Angel Romero. I live in the Colonial Village in, um, neighborhood. We're the neighborhood that's uh, north of I-85 uh, on the east side of Roxborough Street, bordered by Club Boulevard as well. And, uh, you know, crime, thankfully, has not been uh, a big issue in the last uh, few months. However, the biggest problem is uh, traffic related, and, and it's the crossing uh, from our neighborhood to Northgate Park uh, at the intersections uh, with Roxborough Street. So the, the main problem is that the vehicles on Broxford Street drive way too fast and they run the red light all the time. I mean, this is not once or twice. If you sit there, you know, I, I encourage any police officer to sit there for 10 minutes, um, you know, during most times of the day and the traffic on Broxford Street is running the red light constantly. Sometimes it's, it's you know, three, four, five vehicles in a row. And uh, the problem is uh, not just, you know, uh, j just the running of the light itself, but it's the fact that when drivers that are residents in either Colonial Village or Northgate Park are trying to access Roxborough Street, you have to be looking left and right to make sure that you're not going to be uh, hit by those individuals that are running the light. But, but even more important is pedestrians that are trying to cross that intersection. There's a lot of pedestrians that cross that because that's that's the main and supposedly safest connection to Northgate Park. Northgate Park has, you know, the park itself. It has trails, uh, tennis courts, you know, a lot of amenities. Uh, so a lot of people use it, joggers, uh, walkers, uh, parents with kids, cyclists. Uh, I use it all the time. And and it is a constant running of the light. And, and what happens is the light cycle, and, and I realize this is also partially the transportation department, but 
But as far as the police is related, you know, there needs to be more uh, speed enforcement there and, and more than speed enforcement, ticketing all those individuals that are running red lights because it's become a chronic behavior. Uh, this happens all over Durham, but uh, I'm, I'm especially concerned about this uh, part of our neighborhood. So, so uh, I don't know what, what the solution is. We've been told many times that there is no shoulder, but I think police officers are smart enough to, to figure out ways to uh, catch these red light runners, you know, uh, so that their behavior, uh, you know, changes. Because uh, the problem is that when you try to cross, when you, uh, you press the light and try to cross, the light cycle is very short. And, 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 you know, you have to wait until everyone runs the light and then cross. So the time that the transportation department has uh, factored in is not the correct time because they, there's not enough time to cross uh, after all the cars have been running the red light. So, so that's, that's the biggest issue. And number two, the weekend uh, chaos that is happening in, in our part of the city with all the drag racing, motorcycles, you know, there's noise all the time uh, and people driving way too fast. So those are the two. Thank you. Well, I will, and I'll just kind of go back over what you talked about with the traffic you're talking about in terms of the cars running lights. I like, and, and they told you correct, it, in that particular spot, there's not really anywhere we, where we can safely set up because just as much as you want us to run radar, we want to be safe and we don't want to endanger the motoring public, being other folks that are either crossing the crosswalk while we're trying to go after someone running the stoplight. Uh, we'll still look at it. And I think one of the things that you hit on is we'll I'll reach out to um, the city uh, traffic unit, traffic um, lights, the signal shop, and see if they can look at the timing on that. And if there's some adjustments to that, that can be made, that's something that they can easily do. Um, but like I said, as much as we can, we'll get out there and look and see if there's any way we can do enforcement. But I don't want to be a part of the problem or cause a problem um, as big of a problem as we're talking about. And so uh, if there's somewhere we can safely do enforcement, we will. Um, but if not, just please understand um, that is uh, just, it is sometimes it's easier not to do it because because you may cause problems doing it. So but we will look at that, and I, I promise you, I'll, I'll send my folks out there. Thank you. Just one one suggestion. There's there's a church. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. That has a parking lot where uh, a vehicle could park there with a radar and just get the car that's running the light, and right. and then ticket them afterwards. You know, so so there's probably some creative ways. You know, I, I encourage you to drive around, see if there are spots where uh, where you could do some some surveillance and, and right no and, I, and I, I totally get it no I totally get it. Yeah. like I said but just running a stationary radar the biggest problem is once we get somebody on radar getting back into traffic safely uh, because remember we're coming from a dead stop out of a parking lot and we got to look both ways just like everyone else and so I don't want to I don't want to endanger the motoring public um, if us getting out there means we're going to hurt someone as far as the uh, drag racers um, it's just not your part of the city. Uh, please understand that. That is a citywide, countywide problem. Uh, matter of fact, this weekend we ran behind them several times. There was a threat where they were going to shut down one of the interstates and do donuts and all that kind of stuff. So we're very aware, and that is something we're actively working in conjunction with the county as well. And so, um, and Highway Patrol, all of us, um, th this time they actually went to Wake County to shut the interstate down versus the door here in Durham. And so, um, as much as we can, we're putting resources to that and hopefully uh, come up with a, sol a solution that will be um, viable for everyone. And so uh, just bear with us on that. And I know we've had this conversation this time and time before, and um, we're still working on it. It's just a lot of things that we've got to put in play to be able to um, effectively stop these young men, these people are part of this uh, club. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. We have a, a question from Doug and Susan Weaver for you, Captain Gaddy. I'll turn it yes, over to them. Um, the uh, gang uh, task force report characterized gang violence in Durham as domestic terrorism. Does the sheriff's office or the police department 
have a response to that report? Are there certain recommendations in it that you would support? I, I personally have not seen the report. I saw the um, news release on it, and hopefully in the next week or two, I'll be able to get a copy of it and look at it. Um, you know, but just just for me, uh, it's what I call the common sense approach, just be aware of your surroundings and recognize when something doesn't look right. And I think just being overall safe. And so I don't know if Captain Webster's had a chance to see it or not, but I will defer to him as well. I have not had an opportunity to read that report. And um, we will definitely evaluate that report. And uh, as the sheriff office as a whole, we do recognize that there is a, a gang problem within Durham and Durham County, and that we are, you know, putting resources into that. Our intelligence unit is gathering information daily, working hand in hand with Durham Police Department's gang unit. Um, so there are resources being allocated and put towards that. Uh, those issues at hand. Would either one of you agree with the characterization that it is domestic terrorism? And once again, I haven't read that report, so I can't answer that you, Your experience is what I'm asking. Is your experience that what's going on in Durham County uh, and the gang situation, is that amounts to uh, domestic terrorism? I'm sorry, my phone went off. At, at this point in time, I cannot comment on that, sir. That would be something that Sheriff Burkhead would have to comment on. Yeah, I, I would defer, like, like I said, I think it's definitely an issue or problem. Uh, I, I have not worked directly as far as gang enforcement in several years. Um, that's when I was on the heat team, that's something we did. But to tell you how it is now and characterizes like that, I'd be stepping out my realm and I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to either lead you or mislead you believing uh, something that I'm not, I'm not familiar with. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Rebecca Red Jolly. She's now on, she's the co-chair of the PAC too. Rebecca, we can't hear you. Can you unmute yourself? There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. I'm having technical difficulties, but that's what you know. Life is about. I, I'm moving through it as smoothly as I can. So, work with me, y'all. But I do have one question um, before we move off the police department and we go to um, uh, the sheriff. Is there were some gunshots? out near in my community. Um, let me see if I can change it over. Um, let's say a couple of weeks ago, does anybody have any updates on, you know, who those people were? I'm not familiar with any specific incident uh, that has occurred over there in terms of um, us either being involved with someone being shot or injured. Um, and so, uh, unless you can give me a specific date or time. It I was on it Seven Oaks Road. Um, and I can't remember. It was about maybe two or three weeks ago. Yeah, nothing, nothing comes. Nothing came up. Okay. I thought yeah, I heard some gunshots, recall. but all right. Yeah. And, and so, you know, of course, um, if, if there is, I, I'll, I'll go back and research it. If there is something, I'll let you know. Um, okay. Back meeting them by email. But um, to my knowledge, I don't remember anything at all. We've had some areas uh, where we've had people shot in other areas, but to my knowledge, nothing to seven of us. No gunshot. There was okay, something perfect. because the police were present on seven oaks. I don't know what it was, but something happened. Yes, ma'am. And we, a lot of times, we, we if, there, if there's a shot to fire at call, <laughs> we will respond. But to tell you that, that someone has been shot. Uh, I have not heard anyone being shot um, in Seven Oaks at this point or in that area. Um, if there's a burglary in progress, now we've had some stuff dealing with the construction site over there. And so a lot of times when there's a burglary in progress, you'll see all right. the officers respond to that. So yeah. police presence is not indicative that it's something going on as related to gunshots, but something just in general may be going on. Okay. Yeah. 
Thank you for that information. I was concerned about that. Yes, ma'am. Um, um, I'm going to forge through my technical difficulties and we're going to move on. And if you have any additional questions, somebody will get them out the chat or please raise your hand. But we're going to go on to our sheriff's department and we have Captain Keith Webb, uh, Webster and he's our patrol commander. So um, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you and good evening and happy good Valentine's evening. Day to everyone. Um, I'm just, it's an honor and privilege to be with PAC 2 tonight. And um, I have Captain Whitaker with me also, who's the uh, commander of our training and recruitment division. I've uh, just got a few things to cover. It's actually been a, January was uh, a, a fairly good month. Um, we had, from our CID division, we had two armed robberies. Um, we had two aggravated assaults. We had four break-ins. Um, now this number's up a little bit. Uh, we had 26 break-in to motor vehicles and 32% of those were unlocked. And I'm just gonna echo what Captain Gaddy said, please uh, don't leave your vehicle unattended uh, because these folks will definitely take advantage of, of vehicles left unattended. Um, we have seized a total of nine firearms off the streets for the month of January. And in the news, there was a gentleman who had been creating havoc through Wake, Durham, and Orange County. And he was finally apprehended um, uh, on the 12th of this month after an extensive uh, manhunt for this individual and he was charged with over 90 different charges. Uh, we were able to, in conjunction with uh, Durham, Orange and Wake counties, we were able to apprehend him. And uh, now he has been charged with over 90 different charges from breaking and entering, larceny of motor vehicle, felony speeding to elude, assault with a deadly weapon. Um, so this, this individual is off the streets right now. And um, we're, we're looking forward to keeping him off the streets, um, but we're also looking forward for him to take ownership and responsibility for all of uh, that he has done. Our patrol division, I just wanna to touch on some highlights from our patrol division. Um, our welfare checks, uh, we had 19 of those last month. And to me, those numbers are increased. They're up 52%. And what that means to me is, is that our neighbors, we're being neighborly. We're looking after our neighbors. Uh, folks, something doesn't seem right. We haven't seen our neighbors in a while. So we're calling, checking on, on folks. Um, and I, I'm ecstatic that we're getting back into that, that mindset to let's be neighborly, let's check on our, our, on our neighbors. Um, Stranded Motors. We had 35 stranded motors out on our highways, byways, and our secondary roads that uh, people are calling for help and assistance. And we were able to go out and assist 35 folks who were stranded on, on the roadside. Here's something else that I'm proud of. See something, say something. Um, we had 59, we responded to 59 calls for service for either suspicious person or suspicious vehicle in the areas, which to me that again says, hey, we're looking out for our community. We're looking out for everyone's welfare. And it's just, as you can tell, I'm excited about this, that we're getting back into, let's take care of one another. And in our patrol division and scope unit, we attended 64 community events last month. Um, even during this COVID pandemic, we're still, getting, we're still as a sheriff's office, getting out into the community, fellowshipping with our, with our folks 64 times last month. A couple of highlights that um, the sheriff's office is doing and has done. Uh, the sheriff's office is participating in the North Carolina torch run for Special Olympics this year. Um, on June the 1st, 
of this year, we'll be right running the torch along with the Durham Police Department through the county and city of Durham. Um, please come out and support that. This event is not about us. It's not about law enforcement. It's about those, those individuals who are having the opportunity to shine. It's about those, uh, those athletes out there. I attended the conference uh, last week and you get an opportunity, please go to the North Carolina Law Enforcement Torch Run's website. Take about three minutes out of your day, watch that video, watch these, these young athletes and the smile and the confidence that are on these young people. And it's absolutely amazing. I've got goosebumps right now just talking about it. Um, so the Sheriff's Office is fired up and we're gonna be asking for donations um, please don't get mad at us for that, but that money goes to the torch run. It does not go to the sheriff's office. It helps provide everything that these young athletes need. So you're going to see us on top of the Chick-fil-A. Hopefully you're going to be seeing us doing some crazy stuff out there to raise funds, to help these young athletes and to have such a great time. And you'll see them with us out there. We're going to have those athletes with us. And we, we um, moving on to our next highlight. This past Saturday, I attended an event. It's called Homes for Our Troops. Um, U.S. Marine Corporal Sharp was injured when he, his uh, vehicle ran over an improvised explosive device in Iraq. This young man lost his leg, his right leg. He is... He's been through 120 different surgeries over a span of four years. This nonprofit organization is called Home for Troops. They're going to build this young man a home which is, has all the capabilities for him because he is confined to a wheelchair or to an a, a assistant walker. They're building this for free. This is a 501c3 who is 90% of every dollar, they were telling us Saturday, 90 cents of every dollar goes towards purchasing land and building homes for these, these injured uh, warriors of ours. Um, if you get an opportunity, we posted some videos and posted some pictures on the Sheriff's Office Facebook page. Please go and take a look at that. Uh, those are just two of the highlights that I have for today or this evening. I'm available for any questions if anyone has anything. And as everyone knows, um, um, the police and the sheriff's department always love to answer whatever questions anyone may have. So please don't hesitate to ask them uh, during our PAC2 meeting. Uh, if there's nothing right now, we're gonna continue on. Parks and Recreation, we have Colleen Toomey here. so. I'm gonna let her have the floor. Colleen. Oh, hi, good evening out everybody. Happy February. Um, I've already loaded um, some events in the chat here and I'll just hit send on that. Uh, we have some, our Senior Olympics coming up our summer camp for kids registration. Um, so plenty of good information there. Let me send that for you. Uh, some update about some department uh, projects that we are doing. Uh, your tax dollars at work here. We're making improvements to Red Maple Park, Rock Quarry, West Point on the Eno and Lakeview. Um, and so, uh, just some of those highlights are, you know, restroom building um, repairs, uh, changes. Uh, the Rock Quarry Park is going to be our new uh, special event park. Uh, so it's going to be set up better for our big events like Bim Bay and, uh, and Earth Day and everything out there. That'll be terrific. Uh, we are doing some basketball court repairs. We have a new Kaboom uh, project, which is a sponsored uh, playground uh, group that 
Uh, we work with Blue Cross Blue Shield and providing a new uh, playground for the Burton Park area that's not in the PAC 2 um, section. It's near the uh, uh, McDougal Terrace uh, neighborhood. Um, but for those who are uh, familiar with that area, we're going to be doing a new uh, playground build in that community the beginning of May. And that's exciting. Uh, so if there's any other questions, happy to answer. Um, but lots of things continue in parks and recreation here. We, we just finished having our uh, ties and tiaras dance, a special night, date night for men in, in the community with uh, a, a little girl, whether that be a, a niece, a, a, a daughter, a, a friend, a neighbor. Um, so they all had a great time dancing and painting nails and making bead bracelets. So we had some Valentine preschool uh, programs today. So we keep moving along as best we can. There's a lot of good programs, I'll tell you that much. Um, I've utilized Park Recreation as my daughter was growing up. She just graduated from college last year. So we were heavy into Edison Johnson and a few other places. So thank you for all the great information, uh, Co um, Colleen. So we're gonna continue on. Um, we have our health department. Uh, is Aaliyah Brown with us? I'm just trying to think. All right. Um, was there anyone that was from the health department that would like to speak tonight? If not, um, we'll just continue on on our departmental presentations. I just want to remind everybody I'm having a little technical difficulties, but you know we're going to forge ahead because that's what we do in Durham. And I'm just so dedicated to Pac Two and what you know everyone's trying to do out here to make. Um, our community better, not just here, but really the whole city. So um, we have NIS. I know Mr. Spain is here. Miles, I'm going to leave. Uh, uh, give the floor to you, sir. All right. Hello, everybody. Um, I don't have too much to update, but I do have some uh, significant things to talk about. Um, the first one that I really want to spend some time on today is talking about our um, Community Stories, that is a project that we've been doing uh, for a while now where we talk about a community or neighborhood in Durham that uh, has a rich history and we have conversations about it and they tell the stories about the history behind those neighborhoods. And coming up on January 25th at uh, 12 uh, p.m. to 1 p.m., so at the noon hour, um, we'll be talking about the West End neighborhood. So we really want people to come out to that one. And every month, we're always looking for more communities to uh, speak about um, just their own history. So if you would love to participate or just see it, please um, shoot me. You can shoot me an email and uh, we'll get you set up and lined up for all of that. Um, also, uh, our neighborhood matching grants for this uh, for this um, this season has closed. We had a total of 19 different uh, applications for the neighborhood matching grants, which are um, grants that you get from us up to $2,500, uh, $2, where we match it with sweat equity. So we give that much money and it's matched with the time of the participants to go towards any neighborhood focused um, event that you would like to make. We had six applications from our community in North Durham. So please, please, please. Um, this was a phenomenal turnout. We're gonna be reviewing those and getting back to everybody who applied, but we would also love to prepare people for the next time that we open. So if you have any ideas, you and a couple people in your neighborhood would like to do something good, please reach out to me and I'll be able to pass you that information also. And finally, um, just a little another additional positive news. Um, NIS has been partnering with uh, North Carolina Central um, University to put on a Communities Partners course, which will uh, be running the second and the fourth Monday 
Uh, I know those are the times that we are right now with one of our meetings, but the second and fourth Monday, 6 uh, p.m. to 9 p.m. from uh, February all the way to July. The uh, Community Partners course will cover uh, any information that it will take for you to be able to apply successfully to um, any of our uh, grant proposals and just have better understanding on how to interact and advocate for yourself in local government. But besides that, that's me wrapping up so I don't take all of your time, but um, we are excited to continue to work with everybody. So if you need something, if you want something, if you have an idea to build up your neighborhood, please feel free to reach out to us um, at NIS. And my name again is Miles Spann. Uh, Angel Romero, would you, do you have a question? Yes, uh, about two weeks ago, uh, one neighbor in, I think he was in Northgate Park reported that the area right next to the Beaver Marsh, uh, this is a protected, Nature uh, I-85, the Compare Food Shopping Center and East Club Boulevard. Uh, there was a lot of garbage that has spilled over. Uh, most of it was on the shopping center side, uh, but some of that garbage was spilling over into the into the marsh. And uh, and there were lots of neighbors asking, who do we call? What do we do? They were trying to contact the owner of the property. They were trying to contact the uh, the East Everby Creek uh, Watershed uh, Creek Association, and uh, so they were trying to contact a lot of people to see what could be done. They also contacted Big Lots because this was behind Big Lots uh, to see who was responsible for that mess and cleaning it up, and then also you know, who was responsible for the garbage that has spilled into the creek, you know, that's a protect into the marsh. It's a protected area, there's wild birds, there's a beaver, and, you know, it, it shouldn't be uh, full of garbage. So, so anyway, what would you recommend? What is, who's responsible? Because I know there's a lot of pro private property issues, but I think even private owners are responsible for keeping their, you know, their property uh, without the uh, litter and garbage. Yes, yes, I, I do agree. Um, and the first thing I will say is we have a whole division in NIS called what is our cold enforcement officers. And um, with any complaint like this, we would uh, turn around and we would recommend it to the code enforcement officer for the area and they'll go out and check it. And if they find out that there is a violation or whatever the issue is, um, we would uh, reach out and um, ask for it to be, be dealt with by the uh, property owner. Also for um, trash, we, we um, have a few things. We, we also can do neighborhood pickups, so neighborhood cleanups, especially for large trash, large things that need to be taken care of. And we also have Durham One Call. Um, Durham One Call is the easiest way to start the process that anybody who sees an issue, they can use their phone and um, it is a simple app. Let's see if I have the app. Um, it is a simple app that looks like, huh. okay, it is a simple app that is, let's see if we can get people to see this. Um, there's a simple app and I can actually show you what it looks like. It is, uh, wait for it, wait for it. No, can't see it close enough. Well, it's a simple app called Durham One Call and you can also make a phone call to it and send and uh, put a report in. So we have a paper trail for whatever issues and they actually direct your issues, your complaints directly to um, the people responsible for it. We want people to start using Durham One Call because once you use Durham One Call, there's a record. When you give it to me, unless you send an email and even then the email and knowing how people are, some people don't answer their emails and things like that. And that makes it problematic. So first thing I would say is uh, definitely take note of it. Um, if you download the app, you can actually take a picture of it and give the specific location of any problems and it will be sent and made a record of, 
and someone usually comes and deals with whatever that issue is as soon as possible. Um, so what I will do is put the phone number. The phone number is 919-560-1200. I'll say it again, 919-560-1200. So you can call one call and talk to someone to make sure it gets taken care of. And I will put it in, um, I will put it in the chat. Thanks, Miles. Um, you always have everyone. Uh, Pack two is just so blessed to have all this great information, um, continually giving it out to the citizens. Um, I just want to say that I see that uh, Mayor O'Neill, uh, if you've come in to Pack two, I I want to open the forum to you. If there's anything you would like to share with the the citizens of North Durham, we would love it. And so I'm going to give you the floor. Well, good evening, good evening, good evening. I just wanted to drop in. I hadn't seen you all since the big day uh, that my life changed dramatically and the, and the, the life of the, the citizens of Durham uh, spoke loudly um, in, in wanting a, a different kind of change. So I just wanted to drop in and say, hey, I'm working really, really hard, putting in long hours, long days, enjoying myself. Um, I hope to have a, a state of the city soon. We're going to try to tie it in, I think, around the time that the president does his, um, is our latest iteration. But um, it's, it, it's been really busy. I've been learning a lot, a lot and a lot. And my days are still long, but it, um, it's going. We're, we're, we're doing a lot in the city and, and take my, take, um, I guess my, my biggest takeaway is how well run the city is run. Mm -hmm. It really, it really, really is. We have a lot of great employees and they've been giving me deep dives into different departments every week. I've been to the mayor's conference in DC for about a week. Um, I've had orientation with the state as well. So it's been a learning curve, a steep learning curve. We've had lots of things that are newsworthy. You know, I'm dealing, um, uh, dealing a lot in the um, in the gang arena. Um, you all may not know, but we're in somewhat of a ceasefire. Not all violence is gang related in Durham. Um, there, there are differences, um, but right now we are in the middle of a truce um, and we're hoping that that truce will hold with a lot of our gang members in Durham that we've been meeting uh, close with, um, basically on a weekly basis, just about I'm, I'm, I'm having contact with at least um, 10 to 20 of those guys. So it's a work in progress, but I do ask that you remember that they are, they are human. Um, they're not UFOs that just landed. Um, they all have the same desires that we do. Um, their tools of, of the trade uh, have to be replaced though. Um, and we've got to make room for that to happen. And that does uh, take time. The, busy, uh, busy, the biggest challenge uh, so far has been trying to stabilize housing. Um, everywhere I've gone, it's a no um, that we are not able to help them secure housing. Uh, a lot of them are trying, are working, actually. A few of them are working, uh, have been working legitimately for a period of time, but um, the housing uh, has not been affordable along with their, um, the what they call the F, the, the felon status. Um, uh, some of them have felons that date back to the 1990s, early 80s, and those are still um, being used um, to screen them out of viable housing, even when they have uh, when they have uh, jobs um, that can pay um, and legitimate jobs. So I just want to um, know that everything that you read does not um, paint the full picture. Um, there are stories and lives behind each and every one of those, and it behooves us to. Uh, know that we can't police our way out, nor can we arrest our way out, nor can we incarcerate our way out of what is going on out in those streets. So I'm out here working hard, and, and that part of that part will not be televised. Uh, it, it will not be televised. So uh, a lot of that work goes on behind the scenes because they don't have a trust for our government or well, government officials a lot of, in a lot of instances. But you'd be surprised at how many. Uh, 
I appreciate the men in the blue and the men in the gray. Um, our sheriff's department and our police department, they work closely with a lot of those guys um, and, and ladies. So um, things are happening, but it, it, it will take a moment for us to get out of the situation that we now find ourselves in. So suffice it to say, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Uh, just wanted to drop in to say, hey, everybody, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to you, Mayor. And I just feel like we're in capable hands because the city spoke loud and clear. And so, you know, we just, you know, look forward to all the wonderful things that are going to be happening in Durham with your leadership. We really appreciate it stopping in. So, see, this is what happens when you come into Pack 2 You better let your friends know the mayor might show up. So I'm just saying, <laughs> uh, we really appreciate it, Mayor. Um, we, 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 we are going to end it unless somebody has something um, uh, they would like to share. Um, you know, we, we go straight to the meat of the, of the bone. And then when the meeting's over, we, we, we go head on and, and look forward to the next one. So if there's, you know, we'll address anything that anyone has, but um, Brian, I'm gonna pass it on to you. Is Brian? Yes. Brian's not here. There were a few questions in the chat box. Uh, Colleen okay. is still here and I just wanted her to take time to address a few of those okay. that were in the chat box about park. Thank you, Zion, because I'm having difficulty um, with my computer system. So if you can address those, that'd be helpful to me. I saw that there was a, the uh, question about summer camp. So I put in the chat the, uh, the manager who is in charge of the summer camp program, Danielle Haynes at durhamnc.gov. And... Uh, I, I just had the question for, I'm not sure who to address it to. Um, I was just curious when we get Amber alerts on our phones, is that Durham specific? Or is that the region in Durham or is that the whole state? Is there anyone on that can speak to Amber alerts? Oh, thank you, Captain Getty. Yeah, I was try trying to find my buttons. <laughs> Um, typically, when you get those, um, they're coming through your cell carrier, and it is a lot of times state um, statewide amber alert. Sometimes it sometimes it's region specific or a particular area, but most of the ones I've seen have been statewide. And even as you look on the TV, you'll see them on TV eleven or uh, RAL and all that. And so they typically coincide because there's a one location that we're calling into. Great, thank you. All right. Um... Was there anything else, Zion, that um, that I might have missed? No, nope, I think that um, both both of, both things have been been addressed. But if there's any other citizen citizen concerns, I see Jennifer Hinchies. Yes, please, Jennifer. I just had a quick question. Um, I was at another PAC meeting over the weekend, and they're starting to have discussion about whether or not to be in person, and they're considering moving to a hybrid model as there been any discussion about that here with PAC2? Yes, we want to go to hybrid. Um, we're waiting for the city to give us um, a nod so that we can go back into the facility over at the staff development center. They haven't given us the word on that yet. And as soon as they give us the word on that, then we're definitely gonna open it up on a hybrid situation. So as soon as the city lets us know, but I'm sure it's close to letting people know, it's sort of feeling that way, but um, we're gonna make sure everyone in PAC2 knows. Mayor, is, is something that you wanna share with the group? Yeah, I can, I can give you a brief update on that. We meet weekly, um, just met just last week with Rod Jenkins, uh, the, the department, the public health department, who's in daily contact with the CDC, or contact with the CDC and, and the federal, national folk, and state folk. Uh, and uh, he meets with Brenda and I weekly. So we're, they're thinking that we are like 
at the peak. We've had the peak of the variant. And we're hoping that over the next two weeks, our numbers have been going down, that they will continue to go down. The problem has been this last variant has been so um, infectious. The numbers have been like unbelievable in terms of just in January, the number of infections in January versus the number of infections in the whole last year. So we're continuing to monitor those numbers. They're hoping that within the next two weeks, we can begin to look at things um, and sort of begin to lift things. So, and but you know, that all depends on what the variant is doing and how people are being vaccinated. So it, it's been a daily process, but it seems as though the experts believe that we are on the other side of the peak. And hopefully within the next two weeks, we will see, continue to see this downward trend and be able to make some movement. Just, just stay really, really safe out there. The numbers that we were given has just, just been unbelievable um, in terms of the rates of infection, even though our hospital rates have gone down, it's just the number of people getting it. Uh, it's been really, really disturbing. And you see I have uh, lots of children who are not able to, to get the vaccine. So. Just stay, stay hopeful and we'll get there, but we want to do it safely. Absolutely. Thank you for that because um, I, I feel the same way. If we just somebody just kind of stay vigilant until we can get where we need to be. Thank you, Mayor, for clarifying that, that for us and Jennifer for bringing that question to us because everyone is waiting to get back into a situation where we can meet together on something. Anything else um, before we wrap it up? Um, um, there's one thing, Rebecca. Um, Kenny Church is the one of our PACSUS um, team members, and she provided, she's also a licensed, um, a licensed uh, counselor, and she mm -hmm. provided some therapeutic resources, and I've entered those into the chat for those of you who would be interested. That's wonderful. So if anyone that's on now that might is maybe not for themselves, but they might know someone that, you know, would need a, a reference, a really, a really good reference. Uh, Kenny is uh, just, just a wonderful person and she has such a great resource of information. Uh, just take the time to go in the chat and pull that information out so that um, you'll have it. Uh, maybe for someone um, because we just live in these times that we just have to like um, uh, Sergeant uh, Captain Gaddy and also Captain Whitaker was saying, we have to watch each other and we have to be neighborly. And so um, I'm, I think that's important. And when they talk about welfare checks and stuff, we have to welfare check the people that we know. And that's very important. So, you know, just know that um, PAC2 is here for everyone. Uh, continue to let your friends and neighbors know that um, it's the second Monday of the month. Um, and we're gonna do some more outreach later. We are just trying to get through some of the, the initial um, variant decreases and hopefully uh, we're just trying to be ultra safe right now. So I just want to wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day <laughs> evening, should I say. And I look forward to seeing everyone um, next month. Aw, look at the heart. All right. All right. Good night, everyone. Bye. Thank y'all. Good night. Good night. Take care, everyone. Good night, everybody. Have a safe holiday. The rest of it anyway. Thank you, Mayor. So appreciative coming on. I'll be back. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night.